et voila. Okay, so we just got finished doing the literary premiere and it was a lot of fun. It was nice to see people's faces again. And this is by Linda uh, Rutledge. We went over some questions. A lot of it was anecdotes and stories, but I have a joke to tell you, which is a true story. So my mother, bless her heart, she is one of the most gullible adults I know. And my dad liked to take full advantage of that. So when they were dating, they li they worked at the same office building and he would call up, uh, she was like a secretary and a linguist, translator, translator. She was a secretary and translator. So he would call her up from a different department and ask for people that didn't exist. And so one of my favorite ones is where he called her and he's like, um, is there a Mr. Rath there? And she's all like, no, we don't have anybody in this department by Mr. Rath. She goes, That's, he goes, are you sure? I'm pretty sure there's a Mr. Rath. They told me this at this number to call him for this, uh, whatever this business deal is. And she was, so she was starting to panic because she couldn't find it in the directory to, to forward his call. She goes, what is his name? He goes, Mr. G. Rath. And she's all like, no, but I can't find him anywhere for like, 10, 15 minutes, she's like scrambling in on the phone and freaking out. And my dad, again, at the time, I think it's her boyfriend, can't stop laughing. And so she didn't get it. She didn't get it. She never got it. She didn't get it until like after work hours. And so my poor mom, but every time I think of the word giraffe, that's the story I think of, is my poor mom. She was so mad at him when she got it, but he's all like, you didn't get it. The other one was Mr. L. E. Fawn. So let me tell you how that relationship was going. So um, another thing we talked about a lot with this book was the Great Depression and how it changed uh, the generation in the 1930s with the Dust Bowl and how a lot of people didn't talk about it and the huge downturn in fortunes. And I remember when I was younger talking to my mother's mother who was um, she's Mexican American. Well, no, she's not American. She green carded American, but um, she was Mexican, and she was the time of the border, the United States side of the border during the 1930s. So she was in America in the 1930s, and when I asked her about the Great Depression, she had no idea what I was talking about, and my mom had to explain to her roughly the time period, and eventually she said oh okay yeah no she's like we were she was we were poor through and through we were poor before this great depression as you call it and we were poor after the great depression and we were poor during the great depression so she said so their outlook didn't change much at all and so she said it was you know just another tuesday it was nothing it was not a big a big change in lifestyle for them. And that was at the time when I asked her, I think I was in high school or maybe a little bit younger. It was a eye opening to me because we always hear about it or about being this terrible time and how, you know, 1929 you know, when the crash happened, people were, you know, jumping out of windows, remember jumping out of windows and committing suicide and stuff because they couldn't handle the loss of fortune and, and all sorts of things and just kind of just spiraled out of there. And then yet there are people all over the country who weren't even aware that the Great Depression was happening. Um, so, so that was an interesting perspective. We do have two read-alikes. One that was brought up during the during the meeting was Christian Christian Hannah's The Four Winds, which talks more about the Dust Bowl in Texas. It's a fabulous read from my understanding. The other is the um, Water for Elephants, which came out quite a few years ago, which is actually takes place in the late 20s, or maybe the early 20s. It takes place in the 20s, but it has more of an animal, I was gonna say animalistic, animal feel to it. If it's the circus, this is more of a circus inclined where West for Giraffes is more zoo and conservation sort of thing. And this uh, circus is kind of the antithesis or the opposite of that but both kind of have that somber 
enthralling quality to it, the tone of the writing. So that's uh, that's the big big thing for the um, premiere, for the premiere. And I'm dressed in my giraffe feeding outfit boots, you know, as you do. The next book though is going to be Clara in the Sun, which will be on, a meeting is on August, no, the meeting is on October 6th, the first Wednesday of October at 11 to 12.30 roughly. And this is more of a futuristic type book. So we're going from 1930s to near future. And so it's um, also supposed to be very good and kind of an intriguing, intriguing read. So you can pick this up at the Vista Grande circulation desk and if it's, we don't have any more copy, just write your name in the waitlist and we'll get to you as soon as we can. Thank you so much.